people don't want to sell in Canada. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Cause because they're going to have to pay tax. They're going to pay the tax. Exactly. So and looking into the U S the returns were substantially greater. The property quality was greater. The ability to scale over there was greater. Welcome back guys. Uh, so today I would like to talk more about, you know, why Dan is moving into U.S. market, yeah. uh, investing heavily in U.S. I know you've been investing in Windsor for a while, um, and I'm the same. And I've been curious because you know a lot of I heard a lot of other people also like looking into U.S. market. Yeah. So um, you know, st stick with me. We'll be finding more about this. And Dan, welcome back again. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate so, it. Yeah, just uh, tell us more about uh, uh, what picked your interest about US market yeah why not Canada yeah so so early on um, in Windsor the the returns were great right it's my own backyard <laughs> um, you know double digit returns on things you know forced appreciation was kind of my thing as well you know I go into properties rehab them stuff like the that burst strategies yeah exactly yeah <laughs> pretty much yeah and then uh, and then it got to the point where things started changing in Canada as of probably the, especially the last five years and the the return started to get squeezed so i was like okay mostly residential returns so yeah. at this point i was like okay well i have to i have to change my investment strategy so in the beginning i wasn't doing too crazy of renovations like you mm -hmm. know very cosmetic then as the returns started to kind of get squeezed a little bit then what i started to do was i started to kind of get a little bit more heavily into r renovations you right yeah a little bit more structural even, so you know, crazy. You can yeah. create more profit. E exactly. Yeah. More value, stuff like yeah. that, right? And then um, that started to get squeezed. Hmm. So so then I started to buy industrial buildings, right? And then, you know, a couple of years later, you know, my mentality was, well, you know, even though the market's, you know, um, exploding, uh, you know, the retail sector's kind of getting squeezed. People still need to make stuff. Where do you make stuff? You make stuff in warehouses. So I started getting into the warehouse industry, right? And, and that did really well as well. And then that started getting squeezed. So um, in order to start really um, going after the same returns that I was used to and to really like build wealth, Mm. The other option was say like land development. Well, there was barely any land available. Like, you know, how <laughs> being a realtor, it's oh probably so tough to, you know, even where we got our home builders license, it's so tough to find lots, to find vacant land, yep. um, to develop it. Maybe if you um, need to go through the rezoning. Exactly. And then, and then, then you have also the time frame or yeah. the timeline that it takes, right? And the lead yeah. times and all this stuff that you got to deal with. So you have that scenario. The only other option for me at this point was looking into different markets. And for me, looking into different markets, especially in the US, was just the same if I was looking in London, Detroit, or sorry, not Detroit, but like Toronto, <laughs> Calgary. It, it didn't really make a difference to me if it was a two hour drive mm -hmm. or a two hour plane ride. Yeah. It, it didn't really matter. I didn't have connections there. I don't have connections south of the border. So, so it, much just it was always the same. Over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're starting all over. So it was, it was, it was all relative to me. Yeah. Right. And looking into the U S the returns were substantially greater. The, the property quality was greater. The, the ability to scale over there was greater. Um, the access to assets was greater. You you never see here. When was the last time you saw a hundred unit building come up in Windsor? <laughs> Good question. I've never. The, I the, haven't seen. I've seen one that that I I I was sent, and it wasn't. It's not even on the market. It was a pocket listing, right? Yeah. So they rarely come up. Yeah. Okay. In the U.S., they're they're all over the place. Yeah. The inventory is a bigger. Yeah. It, it, there's a. It's a bigger market, and then not only is it a bigger market in Canada, eighty mm -hmm. percent of the large scale real estate is owned by pension funds, insurance funds, REITs, all the bigger guys. Yeah. They're not good public power. equity, like that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. In the U S it's opposite. 80% are owned by, owned wow. by individuals or corps or, or like privately owned corporations. Mm -hmm. That's much easier to get product and yeah. assets. Now, another, another key factor too is in the U S they have 1031 exchange. So what so, does that offer? Yeah. What does that mean? Like, okay. So that means that you can defer the tax, from the sale of a property, okay? Over here, we don't have that. So, so what does that create? People don't want to sell in Canada. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because they're going to have to pay tax. they're going to pay the tax. Exactly. So in the States, 
when you sell, you don't have to pay tax. So you can defer. You can to defer property. it exactly. You can defer it and move it into another property. Yeah. So what that does is it doesn't prevent people from putting the property on the market and selling it. So then you yeah. have more, uh, you have more stock available, yeah. right? So there's that, and then there was there was a, 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 a many more so, reasons. You know, but I, I heard of all those things, um, but how does that impact for Canadians? Who are buying in U.S.? Yeah, so so with Coachwood Capital, the company that that I structured in order to be able to um, offer these types of properties to investors, mm-hmm. uh, we set up a corporate structure mm-hmm. and we set up an accounting structure within that corporate structure that allows a flow through uh, tax transaction uh, to the Canadian investor. So it, it's it's set up in such a, for me to even explain how this it's it's a very complicated structure. But you know, yeah. in, in limit terms, like you know, for yeah. simple guys, like you know, for someone who is like me watching this video, yeah. who is like you know, uh, just want to buy a, a, a small multifamily or you know something. Got it. Yeah. How does it work? Can I still take that advantage of that ten thirty one exchange? And it's all it's it's very difficult to be able to do that. Y- yes, you can, but you're still going to probably be taxed on it because you probably don't have the right structure in place. To be God. able to do it, yeah, you you have to. Um, there there's there's a lot of caveats to be able to take advantage of that, and and one of the issues is um, obviously not being an American citizen. Gosh. So so when you when you have your primary residence in Canada, mm-hmm. there's there's a there's a tax law in place that because Canada does not allow you to defer tax, mm. no matter where your holding is, when the taxes flow back to Canada, you are going to be taxed. It doesn't right, matter so if you're bringing money back to Canada. not even if you bring money back, even if you keep the money in the U.S. because mm-hmm. you still have to file your taxes wow. with the IRS and, and with CRA mm. when that money flows back or sorry, when that when the, um, uh, the when you're process. when you're yeah, when your filing process goes through in Canada, you're still going to run into that issue where you're going to be forced to pay tax. Got it. Yeah. So now you're getting into this like, you know, market, right? So yeah. how did you pick? the specific city, uh, you know, yes, I love to, I, I'm convinced to yeah. buy into US, yeah. but how to pick this particular you yeah. know, city or location yeah. that you're- Yeah, so so, so the next, the, the second portfolio, so I, I, I bought my first US property, it was a 56 unit um, mid-rise building in Canton, Michigan. So that was the okay. first uh, a US investment that I, that I took on. Mm-hmm. And then the second uh, US investment that I took on is in uh, North Miami Beach. So- it's a 58 unit uh, portfolio. And the reason why I picked North Miami Beach is because of the, the, the market of Miami and the, the sheer job growth going on there. You have migration from multiple companies throughout the United States going to Miami. So why, like what's happening there? It's the governance of the state. So it's very tax friendly. Okay. It's very business friendly. Okay. It's very entrepreneurial. Um, there's less restrictions in Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's it's a very business friendly state and Got and it. and city. They they want your business rather than trying to tax you every chance they get. It's a, it's a very friendly place to do business. It's very it's very landlord friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's you know, another question. I, yes. I like you know how is the tenant law work there? Like, yeah. do you want to get your tenant out or increase the thirty rent? days if they don't pay, they're out. Like no yep. question, they no don't questions take asked. File. It's it's the <laughs> strongest. It's the strongest. It's a very. Actually, I wouldn't say strongest. Cause I don't know if there's a stronger, but it's a very uh, strict process where if you don't pay, you, you you're not allowed to live there. And uh, yeah. how is the rental policy where you know a rent increase policy? So th- when that lease expires, mm-hmm. you can increase the rent to whatever you want so within p- reason, right? Like yeah. if if you want to increase the rent by a thousand dollars per unit. That it's that's on you if if you want to keep your unit vacant because yeah. nobody's going to rent it from you. But you know, for example, on this North Miami Beach property, uh, before I even close, mm-hmm. uh, l- rent rent uh, or lease renewals are coming in, and we're we're renewing leases at like 150 bucks more, which is like 10 percent increases wow. um, 
on a, on a per a per lease basis. Yeah, and then especially portfolio like that now ten percent increase of exactly. income means now your it's huge appreciation exactly is also there exactly because the NOI is more right. So um, in short, like, can you tell us a little bit about this project? Like, um, uh, what what's the you know what's the cap rate look like? Yeah, uh, and what is it uh, for investors like me who who is interested to you know. Uh, put up my money into this project. So yeah, yeah, exactly. What so can I expect? Yeah, for sure. So so this particular investment, it's uh, like I said, like I said, it's a 58 unit um, uh, portfolio, mm -hmm. and uh, we're purchasing it a little bit over a six cap. Now mm -hmm. that's not even including the 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 leases that are coming due before Got the closing it. date. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit more than a six cap, and um, that's on the purchase. That's on the purchase. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's, uh, in terms of like, uh, the cash on cash return, uh, it's an average of a five year term mm -hmm. of 11.7%, which is wow. outrageously strong. Yeah. And, uh, at disposition at the five year term, we're expecting a total rate of return of anywhere between 180% to 260%. So whoever investing in this project that they can expect 180 to 200 percent return yeah a in, two in to 260 percent return yeah. in five years yeah wow yeah. so that's so that's that's if the 180 mm -hmm. percent range to the 260 percent range is is on the low end that's if the market essentially where it is no not even if if, it, if the market uh like tanks Oh, so wow. we're giving, we're providing people a range, right? Now the 260% return is if the market slightly uh, Increase, appreciates yeah. mm -hmm. or, or they call it a slight upside. Yeah. What, and yeah. what are the chances of a market appreciating in that? Uh, uh, when it's going, it's going to, like, I, I think, I actually think at this point, the 260 uh, total rate of return is actually kind of light. I think the, the Miami market, mm -hmm. if you actually follow like us on, uh, so say if, if, if you want to follow us on Coach with Capital mm -hmm. on uh, Instagram, we always post like, we've been posting a lot about like the Miami market in terms of like what's going on there. You know, you've got Microsoft moving there. You've got wow. Oracle moving there. Um, you, you have these global the companies. companies. These, you have these global companies bringing hundreds and thousands of jobs wow. uh, to this market. And it's just, it's blowing everything up around. And still happening right it, oh, now. Oh, big time, big so, time. Uh, how can people follow you on that, uh, no, the, the, what's the Instagram handle again? Yeah, so so the, the actual um, the actual investment opportunity is under my real estate company called Coachwood Capital. Coachwood Capital. Yeah, and then the website's coachwoodcapital.com. So and, I'll leave that details, uh, guys, yeah. on, on the screen or in the description. Yeah. So make sure, you know, go check out those details. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm personally interested in this yeah, project. Yeah, absolutely. So um, just one last question regarding this U.S. thing. Um, how does the lending side works? Uh, in terms of the U.S.? So, yeah, I, like, so because, so, you know, we are Canadians, right? Like, and then... And, um, uh, how can you get the lending in U.S.? Yeah, so are we? So so lending in the U.S. really depends on what scale. Okay. So are are we talking single family? Let's talk about what's two different options. Okay. Like either single family or like multifamily. Got it. So so single family is actually decently easy to do because Canadian banks will do that. Okay. Yeah. Now one of the caveats with that, so I've heard, I've never really actually been interested in like single family stuff because the problem with doing out of town. Um, investing unless you have scale mm -hmm. you're going to get you're, you're going to get uh it's going to be very expensive for management Got right yeah, you need you yeah. need the economies of scale for multiple units to pay for the management right Got it. so so that's the reason why i i typically won't invest in under 50 units under one roof in the u.s or out of town anywhere i want that economies of scale so a lot of you canadian banks will actually will loan that to you Okay. So, so that's what I don't think a lot of people understand that. And they, and, and one of the ways that they'll, they'll do that as well is if you want like say a vacation home mm -hmm. or whatever, and they might even allow you to do like a rental down there or something along those lines. Then in terms of the, the lending on larger scale property, you have to be a strong enough person to be able to get it oh, or, exactly. or you have to be a U.S. citizen or something like that. Right. So, so one of the reasons why I was able to, to get the lending that I was is because, you know, financially I'm, I'm strong with mm -hmm. the, the supplement company. Yep. My, I have a large portfolio here in, in Canada. Mm -hmm. So, so, so actually your experience it as a, it does matter. Okay. Yeah. So your experience matters, your, your business experience matters because they, you know, the U S is, they look at the whole, portfolio. yeah, they look at the whole thing. They look mm -hmm. at how well you can run a business Got because it. they they don't look at like this they don't look at like a, a, a complex like that mm -hmm. as 
an investment, they look at it, they treat it almost more like a business. It runs, God, if you look at God. the income statements and balance sheets of these things, yeah. it's it's just like a normal business, right? So God. so they wanna know you have business mm-hmm. experience and, and, a, and, a, and, and business acumen, they wanna know that. Yeah. So that's a couple of caveats and, and, uh, and they wanna know that you actually have some sort of experience even running a multifamily building, Got right? It. That's actually, that actually plays, it's, a, it's almost kind of like a catch 22, right? Because, well, what if this is your first one and if you don't have any experience having a big one, you have so to kind of, handle this? yeah, how are you gonna, how are you gonna get the lending if you yeah. don't have the experience, right? So you have to kind of build, if this is your first one, you have to yeah. build a very strong case as to, why you believe you can handle a large yeah. scale property, right? So you got to sh- prove them that you are capable. It, it's of it's family. almost like applying for a job. Yeah. It's the same thing, right? Like you're you're asking yeah. them for millions of dollars. Yeah. Why should they give you a million millions of dollars, right? Yeah, that totally makes sense. And and what's the loan to value are we looking at here on this particular uh, Miami deal? Yeah. Uh, the loan to value is uh, the purchase price is uh, seventy two and a half LTV. So it's a strong, it's a strong LTV. Oh, wow. Yeah. So even here to get a multifamily, we we, we need to put like 35%. Exactly. So it's a very strong, it's a, it's a great deal. So, so, um, Cocho Capital didn't start out by me wanting to syndicate out equity. Mm Cocho Capital started out by me, uh, trying to get the same returns that I wanted from, for for myself. Got it. Then people started to take notice at how well the returns were or, or how good the returns were uh in the u.s and what i was doing over there and they wanted a piece of it so um God. so so that's how coach with capital started so um just like uh, in, in if i'm investing with you on this mm-hmm. project um what's your course of plan for next five years what are you guys going to do with this project to you know um guarantee me my returns yeah so so basically what we're doing in order to really uh increase returns on this particular asset we're mm-hmm. we're going to be bringing rents to market and keeping up with them because it hasn't been kept up this is something oh, that i okay. like the project doesn't need a lot of physical Renovation. value add okay the value add is in keeping up on rent and keeping up with the market so you mean like whatever the current rents are, increasing low. them to the market. Exactly. And then continuously keeping up with the market rent that's okay, up so in North Miami Beach. The market rents are increasing. Exactly. You keep, oh, okay. Yeah. So and, uh, there is not much like renovations to do on the... No. Oh, wow. No. Well, Very I, small, if any. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, so I'll wrap with a one last question. Yeah. Um, why condos? Uh, well, so so this particular deal, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a 58 um, condo package mm-hmm. uh, portfolio. And um, it's it's where it's located. Mm-hmm. So so where this is located is it's walking distance to Whole Foods. Okay. It's walking distance to a Starbucks. Wow. Walking distance to an LA Fitness. Wow. Um, nine minute drive to Ball Harbor Beach, which is a, a world renowned beach on the Atlantic. It's behind it. There's multi million dollar homes on the water. Wow. So so for me, um, those three retailers, you know. Whole Foods, Starbucks, and LA Fitness, they did the market research yeah. already. They, yeah. They're not putting they're, they're not, not putting those to- <laughs> retailers in places that aren't amazing locations, yeah. right? So not that I didn't do any research on that sub market. Of course I did, but seeing that in there, that, that's something special when you can get yeah. in that. And then and then at this position in five years, uh, one of the goals is to actually dramatically increase the return is to break that 58 unit portfolio up into smaller five mm. uh, to uh, five unit portfolios and sell them to individual investors or yeah. or whatever um, because it's going to increase the value that much right. more significantly. Divide now you have smaller investors exactly. don't mind paying a little bit more exactly because, you know, they can afford it exactly that's, that's exactly a, I love that. so so that's kind of uh that, that's kind of an interesting um strategy yeah. that not a lot of people actually take on heard of yeah that. <laughs> but i but i actually love the strategy and it yeah. works very well oh love it love it yeah uh, honestly uh this is something that uh give, gave me so much insight into u.s mm. market and your project so uh definitely i'll be checking out guys yeah. if you are interested just you know go check out the website um so uh, make sure guys check out and learn from dan uh, <laughs> yeah. man, thank you so much again so i uh, cannot appreciate uh more it's it's uh, awesome, super man. humble to be here and thankful for everything what you did i so appreciate far, it, man i appreciate it. my pleasure